46s. Where are they? Middle. Come on, help me, will you? You haven't got what I want. Well, I'm giving a party tonight. I wouldn't want what she's got either. I thought I'd never get her out of that last one. I was all ready to call the fire department. The nerve of some people asking for a 38. <laughs> I could have gotten her into it, but I was afraid her eyes would pop out. Uh, well, you know the old saying, honey, grin and make the best of it. The best of what? There. But maybe this would please you in uh, plum and brown doe skin. Haven't you something more colorful, something with a zest? Oh, my dear, here all the time. Perfect with your costume and your beautiful bracelet. Jade, Shanghai. I knew it. You could always tell the real thing. Won't you slip them on? I'm just looking. Thank you very much. That's me ten years from now. Hello, Miss Purdy. That's me thirty years from now. Trying to make the best of it. Oh, I wish they'd just throw a shovel full of dirt in my face and get it over with. Gee, kid, you've really got the dumps. I guess we were just born on the wrong side of the counter, Peggy. You know what's funny? All the things you want and you can't have, why... There goes pink champagne. I'd give my right arm to stow away in one of those things and go places. Gee, could I wear that? With those rhinestone slippers, an emerald butterfly in my hair, and the most gorgeous rings on my fingers. Oh, pardon me, madam. Good afternoon. Well, they're certainly a hot one. Too hot to get into one of these things. I have to have something for this evening. Shall we send them, Mrs. Worthing? Oh, no, just put them here, child. My chauffeur will take them. Yes, Mrs. Worthington. Is our Miss Miller taking care Thank of you? Thank you. That's fine. What size would you like, Miss Worthington? Well, I'd like a 28, but I take a 34. <laughs> Won't you step into our sitting room, Miss Worthington? They ain't misses our latest thing. You won't even know you got it on. You're quite an optimist, my dear. Right in there. Mrs. Worthington in this department? Nobody with that name working here. Oh, she's a customer. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Pardon me. Right in there. In that fitting room, sir. Thank you. May? Warren? Yes, I, I have news for you. Dreadful news. I might even say frightful news. About the party? Mostly about Lillian. She is no more. What, sick? With love. I just phoned home. She got married early this morning and is now en route to a honeymoon nest in the Catskills. I knew it was coming. How does this look? I'll take it. I won't try it on. I need a slip, too. Yes, madam. Right away. Oh, no, sorry. Well, we shall have to manage somehow. Who was that? The sales girl, of course. Who'd you think it was? Brenda Frazier? There is not a noticeable difference. Now, Warren, let's not go off the deep end. There is a truly beautiful creature. Here's just the thing. You may be right. Oh, I'm sure, but I wouldn't think twice about it. Oh, you shouldn't. Did you find what you wanted? For myself, yes. But I must pick up some things for my niece. We're having a party tonight. She'll be coming in at the last moment, and I don't trust the clothes she's bringing. She's 17. <laughs> you know. How extraordinary. I should say that this young lady is exactly her size. I'm a 14. But exactly. Now, we need something summery, a party gown. Do you think she'd like this wispy thing? Oh, she'd love it, I'm sure. We'll also need hose and slippers and oh, everything underneath. I wish I had a nephew instead. <laughs> but if she's the exact size, we can measure everything else on her. She's just right. Oh, I'm sure everything will fit. But I know so little about young girls' things. Couldn't miss them. Oh, of course, Mrs. Worthington. We'll send Miss Miller along with you to help out and see that everything's all right. How nice. I hate to interfere with your evening. Oh, it's quite all right. Quite all right. I'll go get the lingerie. Oh, Peggy, pinch me. I've got my chance to peek at what it's like on the other side of the counter. Is that you, Susie? Where you been all night? Oh, Peggy, I had the most wonderful time. What do you think? I was at Mrs. Worthington's party. What? What happened? Oh, I'll tell you all about it in the morning. Right now, I just want to breathe.
Miss Miller. What is it? A man here has an envelope. Says he wants to give it to you personally. Good morning, Miss Miller. Yes? From Mrs. Worthington. Thank you. A hundred dollar bill. A hundred dollars. What for? Happy birthday, my dear, Mrs. Mabel Worthington. <coughs> isn't that wonderful? Hey, this isn't my birthday. Hey. I gotta give it back. This isn't my birthday. I didn't make it my birthday. Let me just hold it. Gee. Ain't it smooth? I'm going right over and give it back. Don't you think you ought to think it over? I don't think you ought to rush right back with it. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. Oh, I can think of a hundred reasons. Tally-ho, tally-ho. Ah, the old American boy. Nothing like a brisk canter in the morning. I feel wonderful. How does the horse feel? Mr. Creighton went along. We had a most satisfactory breakfast at the Hunt Club. But kippers! Take pardon, madam. Miss Miller wishes to see you. Good morning! Good morning! Good morning, Mrs. Worthington. I don't like to interrupt. Oh, but nonsense! It's a delightful surprise! Well, I just dropped in. I can't stay very long. We've got inventory today. Oh, what fun! Uh, sugar? Uh, Two pieces, please. <laughs> you mean lumps, don't you, dear? Uh, it's very kind of you, Mrs. Worthington, but it isn't my birthday. It isn't? Oh, that's perfectly all right, dear. You just keep it until it is. It'll give you something to look forward to. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why, you've already been too generous. What with the shoes and the dress and everything, you hardly even know me. <laughs> keep it, dear. I'll feel badly if you don't. Well, have a scone. You'll find they're excellent with butter. Thank you very much. Little finger out, dear. You turned a wake into a festival last night. You made all the columns. I did, gee. Never gee, darling. It's how amusing in the best circles. Well, I'm not in them. Uh, you may be. Walk across the room, dear. I don't understand. Walk, walk, walk. Oh, come, come. You did better than that last night. Shoulders back. Do you like to travel? Travel? Well, I've always wanted to. Uh, we're fond of traveling ourselves. Christmas in Buenos Aires. January in Florida. Uh, we like... Hunting, too. Sables in Lake Placid, yachts in California, diamonds in Johannesburg. I may be a little stupid, but I don't get any of this. Uh, you will, dear, if you follow our instructions. Keep on walking, dear. Keep on walking. You must learn to do it with your nose in the air as if you smell something burning. There are bound to be a few rough edges. All that's needed is the polish and the setting. Stomach in, child. Say... Are you really millionaires? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, there seems to be something missing. Just the millions. And they can't rule you out for a technicality. <laughs> you see, nature played a little trick on us. We should have been born with blue blood. So we have devoted our entire life to correcting this biological error. What do you do? If you're not, what are you? Well, we're sort of an excess profits tax. To criticize us would be un-American. We are merely bees that take a little nectar from the flowers that have so much. And you, too, can have some. Well, I'm getting out of here. My dear, my dear, what have we said? You've said enough. I've got an honest job, and I'm sick of You don't think for one moment that we go around deliberately breaking laws? Why, you don't believe we'd ask you to do anything wrong. Well, then what do you want from me? What does the world want from a rose? My dear, in these ugly times, mere beauty alone achieves a great deal. Now, your role is just to be beautiful and unobtainable. Nothing else. The uh, Queen Bee. <laughs> <laughs> Pale, you 
look like a chocolate sundae. Well, I wish our bankroll were half as healthy as you are. Oh, don't worry. You'll find somebody. Mr. Wheeler. You always do. Not up here. Undressed, all men look like financially. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Wheeler, over here, boy. There's a nice young man. He's very white. Looks as if he'd been inside making money. Yes, he has that Wall Street tan. Right here, sir. Uh-uh, don't touch it. Dry your hands first. Sometimes you can get a shot when you're wet. You're a good conductor. Thanks very much. <laughs> Hello? Yes, put him on. Mr. McKay. Yes, I saw you both just now. I swam out and took a look at her. I'm afraid it's not what I want. I need a tough seagoing yacht. You got anything else? Something with nice trim lines. What's that? A catch, huh? The Aurora? Spruce mass, yes, I see her. I like her topsides. Good shear. Yes, nice and trim. Smooth and graceful. What's that? Oh, sorry, yes. The overhang, yes, it's just about right for speed and stability. That's slender stern, hasn't she? What are dimensions? 54.9 overall. 14 tons, she doesn't look it. What about her ankles? Uh, anchor, uh, anchors. What's her mainmast? 61, truck to Kielsen. Like that waterline, 38? All right. Fine, I will. Uh, wouldn't you like a pencil and paper? No, thanks. I'll remember them. You will? Uh-huh. Thanks again for saving my life. Oh, not at all. Life saving's no tradition among us sailors. Oh, we can't be called sailors just yet, Mother. You see, we're buying a boat, too. You are? What are you looking for? Schooner? Catch? Class design sloop? That's why we'll never get around to it. We can't tell a jib from a jibbit. <laughs> well, if I can be of any service, my name's John Wheeler. Wheeler? Don't we know each other from someplace? We probably met at the dance last night, of course. I just came in this morning. Oh, well, we're the Worthington's mother and daughter. How do you do? You do. Wheeler, Wheeler. You are one of the Bedford Wheelers. They were forever going down to the sea in ships. Oh, no, financial field, New York. Oh, banking? Oh, mostly trust funds, investments. Oh, how nice. I suppose they keep you very busy, don't they? Not anymore. Retired? Well, for a while, anyway. Well, well, if we're going to sit here thinking about where we met you, we'll need some nourishment. Won't you join us? Well, that's very kind, but... The moment I want to swim out to that mooring and take a look at that catch they're trying to sell me. I want to recheck the dimensions. What do you do? Swim out with a tape measure in your mouth? Just simple mathematics. You see, when you know the height of the mast, I'll be boring you. It's not boring at all. It's amazing. How do you do everything in your head like that? Yes, how do you ever? Oh, it's just that mathematics has been my business for so long, it's become sort of ABC. That's an odd combination, Mr. Wheeler. A dry thing like mathematics and a romantic thing like boats. They're inseparable, really. Without mathematics, you, you, you couldn't navigate. Just hardly take the harbor out of the boat. Well, I'm going to get out to that mooring. Linda, why don't you go along, dear? There might be something we'd like. Yes, you're welcome to. All right. I want to watch this mathematical business. Be careful, dear. Don't overexert yourself. Go slowly at first. I'll take care of her. Uh, Mr. Warren Worthington, please. Warren, I think we have just what you're looking for. He wants a yacht with lots of pretty sails. Sort of a romantic, though. Oh, and one thing more. Don't try to shortchange him. This one can count. you came 
Mr. Wheeler. It gives one such a sense of security having a seafaring man along. This Captain Beasley may have something we'd like. There it is. Scheherazade. Oh, it's right out of the Arabian Nights. Isn't it wonderful, Mother? Don't you think so, Mr. Wheeler? There must be better words than wonderful. You see, and he knows boats. Oh, this wouldn't do for us at all. Why, it's a sailboat. Oh, come on, let's look at it. Her. Oh, her. I always have trouble with the sex of boats and trains. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Captain Beasley? <laughs> always have been, always will be. We'd like to look her over, if we may, with the Worthington. Oh, yes, yes. And Mr. Wheeler. Hello. Well, howdy. Why, you're almighty welcome. You know, things can be more ship shape, but there's so much to keep me hopping. I've only got one leg to do it on. <laughs> she makes you want to go to sea. To harpoon whales or catch pirates. He could buy the Queen Mary in the length of time he's taking. Well, it's done. Well, here's your papers and your receipt from Consolidated, Captain Wheeler. Oh, you needn't worry about the federal OK. I'll take over to the Customs House. Thanks. So I made out a cashier's check for 15000 even. I made the receipt out for that amount. You've got 500 change coming. I'll run over to Consolidated and get your change and bring back Mr. Blanchard. He has to OK everything. Oh, I won't be a second. My putt putt's handy. Oh, there's some beer in the icebox. Make yourself to home. Come on, Mother. Let's have another trip around. No, thank you, dear. This is a big occasion. My feet don't know it. You look like a man about to burst with joy. I am. How does it feel when you get something you've always wanted? I don't know if I can describe it. It's... I don't know. It's like Sunday. Yeah, that's it. And I'm gonna feel like that seven days a week. From now on, every day is gonna be Sunday. It sounds pretty nice. You know, I think we're gonna get a break in the weather. By Friday, we might have a nice little storm to try her out in. Storm? You wouldn't go out in a storm. Sure. Oh, there's nothing like it. Wait till it happens to you. Oh, the wind whistling in the riggings, all hell breaking loose in the sky. Waves crashing down. You gotta fight to keep from going overboard. You hang out of the wheel. You can't breathe, you can't see. The salt blinds you. Then finally you limp home black and blue and you ache all over. I tell you, it's wonderful. What's all this mess? What's going on here? Can you clean up those beer bottles? What do you think this is, Lover's Lane? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, wait a minute. This is my ship. There's some mistake. You're on the wrong boat. Oh, a uh, wiseacre, huh? Should I call the police, Harvey? Shall I, Harvey? Look, this isn't funny. Who are these loud people? Call the police, Harvey. Call the police. This is all very silly. Mr. Wheeler just bought this boat. He has the papers in his pocket. He bought this boat? From Captain Beasley of Consolidated. I am Captain Beasley. These are a fake. I'll show you the real papers. I'll get the papers, Harvey. I'll get the papers. I own this ship, and you've been swindled, young fellow. Swindled? Yeah. Swindled? Phony. Why, it's barbarous. We started to buy that boat ourselves. Why don't you try to catch him while he's still got the money? Calm down, calm down. He ought to be easy enough to find. He's a man with a limp. Sam, get this description. It's his right leg that's lame. Oh, no, it's his left, isn't it? No, no, it's his right. Remember when he was walking away from us? Yes, it was. It was when he was coming towards you that it was his left. So he limps. Yes, and he's very tall, about six foot three. I didn't think he was much taller than you. He has big black eyebrows. Sort of brownish. Slightly bald, and... All I... right. All right. Uh, Sam, you send out this description. He's a tall, short man with a bald, bushy head of hair. He has brown, black eyebrows, and he limps on both legs. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. You'll do your best, won't you, Cap? Oh, surely. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, would you mind very much, Mr. Wheeler, if we ran along? It's past five. Uncle Warren's plane got in at four. He won't know what's happened to us. I'll stay if I can be of any help. Oh, well, thanks. I've already ruined your afternoon. I'm sorry it had to turn out like this. It wasn't the money. It's just that she was so lovely. Well, she's not the only boat in the world. Come along, Linda. Could I telephone you tonight at the hotel? Wish you would. We may not be there, dear. Uncle Warren may want to fly to Florida. You know how he is. Well, if we're not at the hotel, we'll be staying on his island. When you get another boat, drop in. Thanks. We'll meet again. We're in and out of New York. Goodbye, Mr. Wheeler. Well, I guess we won't see each other for a while, will we? No, I guess we won't. I guess we won't. Oh. 
I'm sorry, I... It's all right. I wouldn't want you to think that I'm in the habit of... I wouldn't think anything like that. Thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Wheeler. Goodbye, Miss Worthington. Uh, now, don't worry, Mr. Wheeler. We'll find him for you. Never mind. Never mind, I'll find him myself. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, next week, next year. When I do, I'm gonna tear him into little strips. I won't need enough for the birds to carry away. I'll find him. I'll find him. A saucy young miss was Scheherazade With a yo-ho, blow the man down She dance on her larboard and roll on her lee Give us some time to blow the man down Oh, yip, 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 Were you corny as Popeye? Well, I didn't have time to get tattooed Warren, you're such a ham Someday it'll be your undoing What's eating our little Lorelei? I didn't like the way we made him walk the plank it was too easy, like taking candy from a baby. Oh, that reminds me. Would you take care of these peppermint sticks, Pet? Just in case. Oh. Never gone this far before. This was just plain stealing. Say la vie. Um, pum, 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 pum. Mr. Fenwick will be right in, sir. He was at the pool. Thank you, Paul. Yes, sir. Johnny, how are you, boy? Fine, glad to see you. Looking great. I bought your house in town first. Well, you know, Connecticut's sometimes much more restful, and I'm in one of my restful phases just now. Say, what's this I hear about your having given up business? Oh, that was only temporary. You know about Chicago, don't you? What about Chicago? You're flying. There's a board meeting at 9 o'clock in the morning. You're presiding. Oh, no, I'm not. You can't get out of this one. Cripps says it's very important. Oh, Cripps. It's your first board meeting in over a year. It's one too many. Paul, I'm flying to Chicago tonight. Yes, on the 8.30 plane. Why can't paper box factories run themselves? We've everything ready for you. You better look at the transfers first. Cripps thinks you should load up on Western Utilities. We are. <laughs> at 2%, you'll soon have me owning half of California. Cripps says that's where you went on your trip. How was it? I wasn't there long enough to find out. My, you put things so beautifully for this. <laughs> it looks like a tomato surprise. Oh, hello. Hello, John. I can't believe my eyes. <laughs> I can't believe mine this either. This is certainly unexpected. Yes, well, yes you all have met before. Hello. Hello. Oh, my yes, goodness, this is incredible. Oh, I had yeah. no idea. Then he said to the chorus guy, either you come out, clothes or no clothes, or I'll come in and... And then, then he... And then he jumped right in the water. Mr. Wheels with Priest Whitehall. They handle all of Tom's business. I thought you'd be sailing around the horn by now. Oh, I had to change my plans. <laughs> Warren just told the funniest story. Make him act it out for you like he did for me. And at the end, he jumps right in the water. Gee, Lizzie, dear, will you call? Yes, James, will you tell my son we're having tea? That's very amusing. Isn't Darn it? shame about Warren all alone up in his room. Yes, no tea, no dinner. The sun was really too much for him. Yes, he's so fair. Now, isn't that a perfect pity? I had pate de foie gras especially for him. Perhaps I can send some up. Oh, oh he will... couldn't touch a thing. All he needs is a good stiff drink. Paul, take him on and ask him to come down. No, that would be bad for him. I'll go see how Uncle Warren is. I've got to powder my nose anyway. We'll see how he is. If he's still feverish... Oh, on a cold, bring him down. A good drink will fix him all right, all right. Well, I must be off. Going so soon, darling. How long will you be? Oh, only a few days. Goodbye, John. 
Take care of all those little figures. The office will keep in touch with you by phone. Linda. Linda, this isn't a very good time, and it's not a very good place, but you know how I feel. Pardon me. We better hurry, sir, or I'm afraid you'll miss your plane. All right, all right. Darling, before I go, I... You've got a pretty good idea of what I want to say. Will you think about it, Linda? Oh, we'll talk about it later. We haven't much time, sir. What did he want? Tell you later. Who is it? It's me. Oh, during dinner, I could feel the hot breath of the police on my neck. You've got to get out of here right away. All right, if we can make a rope ladder out of dental floss. Old Adelpate has his tongue hanging out for more of your spicy stories. He'll be up here any minute to drag you downstairs bodily. Think of something. On an empty stomach? Oh, forget your stomach. Look, why don't I get Mr. Wheeler out of the way? He's leaving on the 10 o'clock. We only have to keep them apart for an hour. That's it. Keep him busy until train time. That's it. That's it. How was that patty de foie gras? Oh, doesn't the night air feel good? Well, have you been busy since you came back to town? Yes, I have. I've also been trying to find our old friend, Captain Beasley. They haven't caught him yet. Oh, but they will. I have private detectives working on it. That's good news. Oh, look. Isn't it sweet? Yes, a little sad. A family relic. This must have been very nice. In Grandma's day, we could have taken a moonlight ride. Why don't we? Look, the old candle's still there. Aww. Wait. Let's see if it's still alive. Things were simple in Grandma's day. People didn't hurry through life. They took time to enjoy it. Nobody tried to own the whole world. They found pleasure in the little things. Even the songs were nicer. Put on your old gray bonnet with the blue ribbons on it. And we'll hitch old Dobbin to the shade. Through the fields of clover, we will ride to Dover on our golden wedding day. <laughs> Look at the songs women inspire today. Beat me, Daddy. Eight to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a question I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What would you think of someone who pretended to be something they weren't? Well, if there was a good reason for the pretending... That still makes the someone a phony, doesn't it? I guess it does. But you can't really condemn anyone until you hear their side of it. Well, I don't know. And yet, when the time comes to explain, you can't think of even a single excuse. No. Sorry is such a little word. Well, little as it is, I'm saying it. What? I've tried to push in where I don't belong. I'm no millionaire. I'm a $65 a week accountant. I own two suits, one with a hole in the seat, and a watch that's slow. There are 30 million other guys exactly like me. Will you forgive me? Forgive you? You're not mad? No, I, but, but the yacht and everything. Oh, you're kidding. It's a gag. $65 a week and you wanted to buy a yacht. Look, you only live once. This is my life, and I'm not going to spend the best years of it in a swivel chair. People take their money and lock it up in safe deposit boxes and don't use it. They do the same thing with their lives. Not me. I'm taking time out to live. You haven't any money, so you're going to retire and buy a yacht. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. I could be like the other fellas, fighting their way to the top, and I'll probably have a yacht when I'm 65, but then I'll be too old to enjoy it. I want it now. But what do you do for money? Where'd that 15000 come from? You stole it? Yes. For my salary, for the last 11 years, I've banked half of every check and all my Christmas bonuses. And you lost every cent? Thanks to Captain Beasley, I had to wire my boss collect for bus fare back. $65 a week, 
How can you save that much? It can be done. Well, you do your own laundry, eating one-armed joints, no movies, no clothes. Guess you wanted to go sailing pretty badly. Oh, I've been sailing ships ever since I was knee-high to a bowsprit. But they always belong to someone else. I thought you were J.P. Morgan, Jr. I was going to tell you eventually, and somehow I thought that having the boat would solve a lot of things. I could have made it pay, too. Hauling cargo up and down South America, I had it all worked out. Oh, what's the use of justifying it? I wanted you so badly, I'd have pretended anything. What am I saying? I can't compete with fellas like Fenwick. Who ever heard of a milk wagon horse winning the Derby? I have. Tonight. we are. I feel weak all over. It was just like that when you kissed me in California. But I thought it was silly to feel that way over a perfect stranger. It was sort of a sickish sensation? Yes, it was awful. It was just like that with me, exactly. How did your stomach feel? Oh, well... Mine, too. hollow now? Even hollower. Then you must be in love, too. Is that what it's like? That's what it's like. I guess I must be in love. I guess so. Well, you certainly did a good job keeping him busy. Where'd you go, anyway? Oh, well, never mind. What I'm dying to hear is how you've gotten on with young Fenwick. Oh, man, I'm so happy he proposed. He did? Oh, darling. Let me be the first to congratulate you. That's probably Mother and Dad. Come in. Ready? Oh, hello, Mrs. Worthington. I thought you were on the 10 o'clock train. Well, Mother... I guess it's as good a time as any. I know millionaire. I'm an accountant. I make $65 a week. $65? I know I don't deserve her. I have nothing to offer but my love, but I'm going to try to make her happy. What are you talking about? Your daughter's hand in marriage. Well, there must, there must be some mistake. No, there isn't. I told you he proposed. He? Him? Will you leave here as quickly as possible, you... you imposter? I'll be back in just a minute. You lunatic, what does this mean? It means that I'm going away with him, and nothing that you can do or say will stop me. Have you gone out of your mind? What about Todd Fenwick? You can't walk out on us just as we're about to hit the jackpot. We're all set to make a cool million. Strangely enough, I'm not a bit interested. I have what I want. Listen, Peter Pan, face facts. If that short haircut ever finds out you gypped him, you'll wind up in jail or back in the girdle department. A sucker never forgives or forgets. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Now, be a dear and help me pack. We'll be in New York in 45 minutes. Thank you. What's that? How to support a wife and get a yacht on $65 a week. Saving $31, food $15, rent $15, miscellaneous $4? That's for clothes, doctor bills, and any little emergencies that come up. And in 10 years, we'll have enough to get another boat. Oh, I left out $10 every week for Acme. For who? That's the detective agency I hired to catch that crook. That's a necessary expense. They only trapped that rat with my money we didn't even worry about. Yes, that would be dandy. Oh, he doesn't look so good now. Expecting a girl like you to give up everything and scrimp and save to buy a boat. It was all right when I was alone, but now it's not the same anymore. But I want it to be the same. I don't want to spoil anything. By rights, we should be saving to buy a house on the hill with gingham curtains and kids running around playing cowboys and Indians. 
You know, we're just being impractical. Isn't it wonderful? Maybe your mother was right. You're giving up all the sweet things for the bitter, dodging taxis instead of riding in them, drinking coffee out of chip cups, having your shoes resold. It's a world you never knew. You wouldn't be trying to scare me, would you? Oh, if it wasn't for that dirty skunk, we'd have everything we want tomorrow. We can anyway. I have some money of my own, just 15000 I, I saved it out of my allowance. I was afraid you'd do something like this. Why shouldn't we share everything? After all, it's really as much your money as it is mine. You've got to take it. It's the only way out. It's probably your nightclub spending money. You make me feel like a head waiter. I'm not going to be one of society's cat men. Also, there's such a thing as self-respect. And there's such a thing as pig-headed stubbornness. Now, listen. I won't touch a cent of your money. We might as well face it. You'll have to live on my salary. You've got to answer yes or no. Yes. I'm going to eat what you eat and live where you live. Mrs. Clancy's rooming house? Is that where you live? That's where I live. I'm going to do all the things you do. I want to be so much like you that we won't be two people. We'll be one. And one can live cheaper than two. I'm sure glad you got it patched up. But why don't you take the money? <laughs> A gentleman who's going to take his intended to the finest cheap restaurant in town. We should put on our hat and not take too long. Wouldn't you rather have a home-cooked meal, as the saying goes? Don't tell me you can cook, too. You're really cooking dinner? My own little hand. That's unbelievable. <laughs> the chops may be the same way. Say, I've really got a triple-thread woman, haven't I? Class, beauty, now domesticity. You didn't tell me about this. I couldn't very well go around wearing a neon sign on my bathing suit. I cook, too. I'm glad you didn't. I'd have been trampled in the rush. Oh, hello, Mr. Kellogg. Oh, Come on in here. Mm. Oh, dinner. I would like to interrupt. Oh, this is Mr. Kellogg from Acme, my detective agency. Miss Worthington. Hi there. Good evening. Won't you sit down, Mr. Kellogg? What's that name again? Worthington. I always like to get names straight. You know, names are my business. Well, Mr. Kellogg, what a lot. Oh, a slippery bunch, a very slippery bunch. Bunch? Been at it night and day, and for what we're getting, this case is costing us ten times as much as you're paying. You said bunch. There were others? Exactly. You were victimized by not only one man, but by a whole ring of crooks. Oh, I didn't see anybody but this Captain Beasley. Uh, that's where you're wrong. A gang of three. Where are they? Oh, keep your shirt on, Mr. Wheeler. Rome wasn't built in a day. I didn't see anybody else, did you? No, but there might have been, for all we know. Was she present, Miss Fortherton here? Worthington, yes, she was. Well, you should have told me this before. Well, the important thing is, can you catch them, these people? Can we? Acme never sleeps. Well, I hope we get them before they spend all the money. Oh, rest easy. This time next week, you'll be shaking my hand down the police station and paying me that reward. Reward? I'm giving Mr. Kellogg 10% of everything he recovers. Yeah, and with that dough, I'm building me a summer home where I can shoot ducks. There's a thrill for you. Bang, bang. Plop in the water. Dead duck. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Talking about money while I'm here, we might as well keep the account up to date. Uh, you wouldn't rather wait till Monday? Always like to keep right up to snuff. Don't worry, Miss Featherington. Any minute now, we'll be snapping our bracelets on them. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll be checking with you. Nice kid. Oh, he may look a little dumb, but he's from the best agency in town. If anybody can catch him, Kellogg can. Darling, before you know it, you'll be frying eggs in our own galley. And it can't be any too soon for me. Yes, it can't be any too soon. Let's go! I'm sorry. Oh. What's one dinner when you'll be cooking for me for the next 200 years? My invitation still stands. Get your umbrella and hat and I'll change my tie. Oh, darling, before I forget, will you do an errand for me tomorrow? To the moon and back. I've got some money I'd like you to deposit for me. Sure, what bank? 
Well, I've closed my old account. There's no sense in opening a new one under Miss Worthington. We're not going to be Mrs. Wheeler so soon. So? So why don't you just deposit it in yours for now? Make it sort of a joint account. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You know what's the matter. Don't pull that innocent stuff. There you go, plotting again. John, I only... It's a nice trick, trying to sneak your society money to me right under my nose. My back is turned. I merely want to... I've been to... all through this. I don't want to hear you mention money again. All right, all right. It's nothing to get upset about. What do you think I am, anyway? There, there I want now. to make this clear. I wouldn't let you buy me a trip on a subway. All right, you can run along behind. Am I forgiven? No, not yet. I want to sulk for a while. If you didn't have a face like that, our quarrels would last a lot longer. We'll have plenty of time to fight after we're married. Right now, let's go out and celebrate our engagement. All right. Go wash your face. Time. Oh, Colonel, I'm in a terrible hurry. I need a favor. Will you? Oh, you're awfully sweet. It's this. I have $15,000 I want you to give to somebody. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. This must be a bad connection. For a moment, I thought you said you wanted to give somebody $15,000. I say, do you feel well? well? Of course, I promise. But I must say, this is a little bit out of my line. You're a darling. His name is Wheeler, and he's got to get it back so he thinks he's winning it. You know, a lucky streak. Ah, uh, this is a New York fairy tale. We'll make history, giving money away. <laughs> All right, send it round by messenger. And where do you want to start? Well, let me see. It'll have to be done in easy stages. He's a little conservative. Better start at Nick's. <laughs> Just my luck to marry a woman who drinks. I'll wait for you here. Are you Nick? No, I'm Chick. Nick is sick. Did the Colonel phone? Oh, hello. Yeah, everything is fixed. You sure you want him to win? Maybe I ain't hoid right. You hoid right. You must be crazy, huh? That would be telling. There he is with the root beer. I didn't try. <laughs> you did very well. Nobody ever makes it. You can have some of mine. A prize. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? 
strings. Now it's official. You shouldn't have done it. I didn't want to spend too much, but I wanted something that was nice. Tiffany's. It's just what I've always wanted. The stones aren't as big as I'd have liked, but the setting's pretty. Oh, I feel so lucky. Say, let's put a nickel in one of those things. No. Oh, come on. No, we can only save our quota barring accidents, and gambling is one of those accidents. Oh, one nickel. Tonight's our lucky night. There's no such thing as luck. These things are a simple matter of mathematics. Unless they're fixed, in which case they never pay off. But there is such a thing as luck. Darling, if there's one thing I thoroughly understand, it's numbers. Just apply the law of probabilities. But there's only one chance in 500,000 that a slot machine will pay off. Why waste a nickel? But there's never been a law passed against luck. Why, even Mr. Einstein might put a nickel in and hit the jackpot. It doesn't happen in a half a million times. All right, I'll show you. I see. I told you tonight was our lucky night. Well, that doesn't prove anything. It's just due to come up, that's all. It proves you're lucky. Tilly, luck. Here's your answer. Give in, Mr. Wheeler. We're a lucky combination. Hey, what's going on here? It's a mathematical coincidence. It can't happen again. How many machines do you have here? 35. The odds are 27 million to three that I won't hit another jackpot. You've got a professor here today. I think genius. Science Quiet. leaves no room for luck. <laughs> it got in somehow. Well, this is fantastic. They're out of order. It's a mechanical fluke. They've gone haywire. That ain't luck. It's just something like better comes out. I'll prove that this is mathematics and the last thing I ever do. My luck is the most stupid. Nobody with any intelligence. Boys, he is. He is. Seven, the winner, coming out. Seven, the winner, up that, four in a row. I mean, I guess. Let it ride? You said it. Seven, the winner. Come on, Lucky. I'm not. I tell you, it's just freakish. I can't possibly throw another seven. Eleven, the winner. Let it ride. Eight in a row. What do you call that, Mr. Wheeler? I don't call it luck. There are only 12 sides to dice. That's only 530 different possible combinations. Just because the same combination comes up several times, it doesn't mean... All right, but it can't possibly be... Seven, the winner. Seven. Those dice are crooked. Crooked. Hey! Now let's play roulette. Red and even... Do you know what the odds are on roulette? Silly, you can't beat it. Oh, come on, just one. Place your bets, please. There, now, 15's a good number. Darling, don't do that. 18, red, even. We win. Now do you believe me, darling? Place your bets, please. One, two, three, red. Place your bets, please. Six, even, black. I win. You see? I just can't figure it out. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I can. It's about time you gave Dame Fortune a little credit. Two odd in a row, three even. It's to Morgan's theory. In any numerical series, the frequency with which any given number appears is in direct ratio to the number of possibilities and the frequency of results. That's what's been going on. I told you it was mathematics. Well, whatever it is, keep going. Make your bets, please. Darling, I think I'm working on a great formula. I want to try it on the numbers. Enjoying yourself, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, darling, I want you to know Colonel Prentice. He's the boss here. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I congratulate you on running an honest mean, game. Otherwise, mathematical uh, law wouldn't work. Thank you, sir. I give you fair warning. I'm going to break the place. I'm grateful for the tip. What were the last winning numbers? 17, 11, 5, sir. That's your best, please. Make your best. I'll need some paper. I'll get it. You keep and, playing. And a pencil. 12. Oh, Bill, take that pen and pencil to that gentleman in the gray suit. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Two specials, Jack. Yes, sir. Make your best, please. Number 15. <laughs> oh, 15. He's awfully cute, isn't he? Scribbling down all those numbers, just like a schoolboy. <laughs> I gather you rather like him. Make your best, please. I rather do. <laughs> 19. What? Oh, 
Oh. Amusing lad, then. Has a sister, man. <laughs> number 19. 19, 19. It's 19 to my number. I knew it would be. <laughs> I say, Warren doesn't object to this wiping the slate clean business, does he? I hope no part of this 15,000 is his. Oh, no. This was a private matter. Ah. Oh, thank you. I want to take this to him. Yeah. Eight wins, even. I get it. I get it again. I got it late. Well, it's miraculous. I just love the frequency distribution of errors, which is... I believe you, darling. Could I cash these in, please? Oh, not yet. I think you let that can go on beating it. Well, then keep going. Maybe you can win our boat. And six months' provisions. Oh, it seems a shame to quit now when you haven't far to go. I feel dizzy. I can't think anymore. Well, a nice bit of luck. I, I must be a little dizzy. I haven't done so much figuring since I set up the Fenway Trust Fund. Roulette takes such intense concentration. You gotta consider each of 37 different possibilities. Yes, dear. That's good lemonade, isn't it? Mostly rum, dear. There you are, $14,103. Well, you're only 900 away from your boat. Come on, let's try once more. Right now, I couldn't add up two and two. Let's go home. Isn't it wonderful winning all this money? Wonderful? It's just the old scientific mind work. That's what it is. Wheeler, my boy, you have mathematical sagacity. You know who said that? Patrick Henry. No, it was my professor. You know who the top man in the class was? The professor. No, me. I guess I proved it's not luck, didn't I? It's just the old sagacity. I don't bet willy-nilly. Yes, dear, you can't lose. They're at my mercy. Yes, dear. I could work out a system on anything. It's a cinch. We're not going to have any old fish barge. No, dear. We'll have a 200-footer with twin diesel motors chugging back and forth. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Come on, darling. It's way past your bed. Don't mention it. Morning. Good night, darling. Well, come here for just a minute. Oh, it's too late. I'll talk loud and wake everybody up. All right, just for one minute. <laughs> Sleep.
Hollow Priest Whitehall Incorporated? Certified public accountants and investment brokers? Well, this is John Wheeler. Yeah, wage slave number 65. I won't be in this morning. I won't ever be in. I'm quitting. And you're all fired. What are you doing here? I have great news for you. Todd Fenwick proposed by wire, and we accept it in your name. The wedding will be next Sunday. Well, I hope the three of you will be very happy. I will, because I won't be there. Oh, Linda, darling, be sensible. You know what this means to Warren. Why, Todd Fenwick is his biggest catch. If you don't play ball with Warren, there's no telling what he'll do. May, you're wasting your time. I've made up my mind. I'll take my chances with Warren. All right, if you're going to be stubborn about it. Remember, I warned you. Good luck to you, baby, anyway. Thanks, May. Mr. Kellogg. Your mother is a charming lady, isn't she? That seems to be the general opinion. <laughs> home from work yet? Oh, no. No, he isn't home from work yet. Something important? Well, I wanted to get him to sign a warrant for somebody's arrest, Miss Worthington. I better have a look-see. I tell you, I just looked in a minute ago. Uh, he never gets home until about 5.30. It's only a quarter after four now. Why don't you come back in an hour? I'll wait. Won't you come in here and wait? Yeah. Yeah. Please sit down. Going somewhere? Oh, just moving to another flat. Oh. have you been? Uh, didn't sleep a week all night. Ah. Oh. Been trailing people. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Can I get you some hot milk? No, that would only make me dopey. You know, you're a nice kid. But in my business, you can't be sentimental and go duck hunting, too. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Miss Worthington, where might you be tiptoeing to? We're leaving, Mrs. Clancy. You have to pay for the whole week. Yes, this will take care of us both. Thanks. You didn't take any of my nice dishes, did you? That's not very funny. What are you whispering about? I've got asthma. Oh, no, don't go in there. Why not? It's still my room. I've paid for the whole week. I still want to use it. Leave your forwarding address downstairs. Hello, honey. Thirty-one, I did it again. Darling, I just won $225,000 in the last half hour. John, I think Imagine we're... what we'll do to the Chuck on a night. I'll own the place by morning. The Chuck will be a little unwieldy to sail to South America. Come on, darling, you've got to get ready. What's the hurry? Hey, I know a barking team with an all-steel hull I can get for $120,000. Darling, we're taking the plane to California tonight. What? We planned it all last night. We did? I don't remember, sweetheart. Do you remember anything about last night? Just that I was the happiest guy in the whole world, last night and right now. Good morning, Mrs. Wheeler. So that's going to sound good. Linda and John Wheeler. I like that. They're real old-fashioned names. Sound like a couple of pilgrims. Do you have to go tonight? You promised. I'm all packed. What's the hurry? You don't seem to realize, honey, what I've got. I'm grateful for what we already have. No, you don't understand, baby. Every man has his mobile. This is mine. I've certainly waited long enough for it. Now's no time to walk out. Why not? We've got what we want. Well, wait a couple of months. I'll buy you the state of Rhode Island, put sails on it. Look, darling, systems have a way of acting like folding beds. You don't want to get caught. It's raining $5 gold pieces, and you won't let me stop and pick them up. Look, you don't realize there must be 50 other places like the Chuck. I'll knock them over one by one. Shh. What? Don't worry. I'll go to California. We'll go... But we'll take half of New York on the plane with us. John, we're leaving now. Yeah, that's funny. That sounded like a command. It certainly didn't sound like you. Well, you certainly don't sound like yourself, either. Make up your mind what you want to be when you grow up. Well, now, look, Linda. I'm looking, and I can see very clearly. Half of New York, Rhode Island. Why, you sound like a real estate agent. What became of all those rosy dreams about blue lagoons and golden sunsets? Now that you can have them, why, well, you want to spend your time in somebody's back room playing roulette with a lot of chiselers. You know that's not what I want. Do you know what you want? I think it's about time you made up your mind. I'd like to know so that I can make up mine. I've made it up. Where do we go first? Uh, well... First, we eat. Then we'll go do some last-minute shopping. No, that's not mine. Then go buy the tickets. Have I got everything? Sure. You know, the law of probability's been awfully good to me. Out of 130 million people that you should wind up on my doorstep. I hope you always feel that way. Oh, I gotta pay Mrs. Clancy. Mrs. Clancy! I've already paid her. You did? Shh. What's the matter? Mrs. Clancy's having a baby. What? She's a widow. Well, live and let live. So it was a matter of life and death. No, it's just that I want to be on our way. We might not be able to get tickets the last minute. Oh, we should. Well, there are four planes a day. 
Oh, while you're waiting, I'll go get some things at the drugstore. I'll be right back. Anything you want? Yeah, shaving cream and a kiss. In front of everybody. You don't just think we're saying goodbye. Paper, mister? Paper? Paper? Paper, mister? Paper? Linda! Paper, mister? Darling. Paper, mister? Paper? I'm so happy, I, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say either. I just talked to Mother from Chicago. It seems that Sunday's a little soon for everybody, but not for me. Come on over here, Todd. I've got something to tell you. What, darling? Well, I must explain something to you, Todd. Look, dear, don't worry about the arrangements. I'll take care of everything. What's the matter, dear? Oh, I forgot to phone Mother. You wait right here. I'll be right back. Well, phone her later. Oh, no, no, I must right now. Go out and use the door marked exit. I, I, you. Quick, drive to Jersey City, but I won't be with you. Hey, what kind of a gag is this? Here's twenty dollars. Don't let anybody catch you. With twenty dollars, not even my wife will catch me, and you don't know my wife. How'd everything go in Chicago? Oh, fine. We're starting another factory. That's good. I've got better news than that, though. I'm going to be married Sunday. What? Yeah. Congratulations, Todd. That's really wonderful news. That's what you needed all along. Oh, that's what every man needs. Say, what are you doing here? Don't tell me you're retiring. I'm here. getting married, too. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, old Dan Cupid got us both at the same time. <laughs> Looks like it. Lots of happiness, fella. Same to you. Say, maybe we can all get together soon. Sure. We won't be back for quite a while. When I do, I'll get in touch with you. Do that. The girls might have a lot in common. Say, as a matter of fact, you know this girl. Do I? Which one? I'm sorry, sir, but you're holding up the line. You better get your tickets, John. So long. Happy honeymoon. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I want two on the 7 o'clock to California. The 7 o'clock's all filled up. I can give you two on the 10. All right. Did you get the tickets? Yeah, I got two on the 10 o'clock. They were all booked up on the 7 o'clock. Oh. It's the best we could do, darling. I just saw Todd Fenwick. He did? He's getting married, too. What did he say? I didn't get a chance to tell him about you. Come on, let's find him. He'll be surprised. Oh, we'll see him when we come back. Well, all right. Okay, come on. I'll buy you a nice little supper at the Chucka, and then an hour or two of the Wheeler system. We'll fly to California on a rainbow. Oh, I just remember a terrible, terrible thing. I forgot to say goodbye to Mother. I've got to do that. Oh, yes, we should. Let's go. Oh, no, no. She still feel the same about me? Oh, no, darling, it isn't that. Yes, it is that. Now, I'm sorry we didn't catch the 7 o'clock. <laughs> Honey, I'll meet you at that gate at a quarter to 10. I'm afraid to let you go. Why? She'll try to talk you out of it. I've always felt that. Don't worry, John. I'll be there. You know why? It's a secret, but I'll tell you. It's because I love you. Will you remember that? I'll try. You take care of the luggage. Todd, here. Oh, here you are. Come on, yes, we better. Say, what is this thing you want to tell me? Tell, tell you see, it's about... Oh, Todd! Oh, Todd, darling, all the trouble. Todd, darling, all the trouble. You're still... He just got me. 
Yeah. Well, I see you got here first, Linda. Where have you been hiding for the past few days? Oh, now, Theodore, never having been a bride yourself, you don't realize how much there is to do. Oh, 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 your headaches, oh, Benedict. Oh, oh, thank you. You made a liar out of me, Linda. I didn't expect you here. Oh, but I'm glad to see that your head cleared up. Don't see it, Hank. What's that, then? I haven't any idea of going through with this thing. It isn't. Well, let's go. I reserved a table at the tavern. Oh, hurry up, Uncle. Uh, no, no. Uh, you folks run along. I, oh, I have some business us? to attend to. Please oh, join us. I can't wait. Oh, no, no. I'm afraid I can't wait. This is something I've been putting off much too long. I, I, I'll join you later. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Glad you get me. Stay with that cat. Something bothering you, dear? Oh, it's my headache again. I may have to be excused, Todd. All right, boys, you're going to see history made in the next two hours. Seventeen. The boy has $900 more coming to him. When he wins that, stall him. What do you mean, stall him? Mm, let him win 500 let him lose two. Let him win three, you know. There's a guy in the office wants to see you, Harry. Mm, thank you. Eleven. Well, the old walrus himself. With a pain in both tusks, thanks to you. I want an explanation of this little conspiracy against me. Conspiracy? Oh, you mean Linda and the boy. She told me that was entirely her affair. Giving away $15,000 of my hard-earned money? But Linda assured me you had no part in this transaction, old boy. Must you believe the every syllable of a lovesick shop girl? I can see why you were cashiered from the army. Now, let's keep personalities out of this. And whatever the situation, I'm in hearty agreement with what she's doing. Well, well, what have we here? A sentimentalist, perhaps. She's a grand girl. Give her a break. I can't afford to. And what's more, neither can you. You upset my apple cart, and I'll upset yours. I want my 15,000 back. Well? Somehow, Warren, you always bring out the heel in me. I don't know why. <laughs> Perhaps it's because I know where so many of your bodies are buried. Be sure that he's thoroughly dry cleaned. Yes. Give that to Jack. It gives me a cold chill to think what that will do to her. Number eight wins. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's marvelous. <laughs> All right, here we go again. Place your bets, please, ladies and gentlemen. All bets down. Number nine. Oh. What? It was number nine, sir. You were on number seven. Was I? It's funny. That's the third time it's happened. Two, just two numbers off. What's the matter? Did you slip up somewhere? Oh. Sure, I've been putting X in the wrong place. Ladies and gentlemen, place, place your bets, please. please. Well, I'm going to follow yeah, that my hunch. That's it. Well, here's where I want it all back. All bets 17. Lady Lucky. Hold your bets, please. 15 wins. Oh. It can't be. It's going it the other can't way now. Be. Uh -oh. Number 11 wins. All right, place the camera, go around and around. I thought so. You double crosser. I'm sorry, Linda. And you, you. <laughs> you know, my dear, it's becoming very obvious that you're a ten cent baby in a million dollar business. I should have expected this. You're all stomach. There isn't any room for a heart. No need for impertinence. It's really for your own good. Number three. Stop it. Stop it. You've got to listen to me. You're the only human being in this room. It's his life you're robbing him of. Eleven years of it. Eleven years of going without everything. Saving pennies. Going without living. Give it back to him. He never did anything to you. How can you do this to him? Might I ask how you can do this to me? Walking out when by just lending your mere presence I could have all the things I've always wanted? Oh, Warren, you can get somebody else. When Lillian left, you got me. Bargain basins are filled with Linda Worthington. Unfortunately, darling, Todd Fenwick's in love with you. 
not somebody else. Oh, Warren, you can be such a nice guy when you want to be. You don't want to do this. You're just sore. Give it back to him. You don't need it. You're after big money. Why, 15000 to you is only... Chicken feed. Of course. And if I give it back, what then? You'll promptly run off with him. Ah, there's the rub. He gets you along with the chicken feed, and you're my golden goose. Oh, all right. Let him lose every cent. We don't need the money. We can go away without it. What do you suppose he'll say when he discovers you stole his life savings? And after tonight, it'll look as if you did it twice. You won't tell him anything. You wouldn't dare show your face to him. You wouldn't risk it. What risk? I was an innocent tool. Naturally, I'd put all the blame on you. And I have ways of doing things. He won't believe you. He'll believe the croupier whom, shall we say, you bribed to sabotage his brilliant system? I'll say it was a lie. A poor bookkeeper who's lost $30,000 will be in no mood to listen to the lady who so cold-bloodedly gypped him. He won't believe it. He won't believe it. Give him his money back. Gladly. I'll be only too happy to give him his little boat in exchange for my little place in the country. Isn't that fair? Am I asking so much? You're riding for a fall, baby. We're only trying to save you from it. He wants a boat, a silly, impractical dream. That's what he really wants, and let's give it to him. You're very clever, Warren. You've closed up all the exits. He wanted something more than anything else in the world. Maybe it was silly, and maybe it was impractical. But I took it away from him. And I'm going to give it back to him. Give him his money. <laughs> Harry, attend to it. That's Fred. Linda. Linda. You know, I hate to play rough, but I'm afraid if you're to marry Mr. Fenwick on Sunday, Mr. Wheeler will have to leave town tonight without you. A little note, short and to the point. That would probably be the quickest, the simplest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make your best, please. Well, you might as well take the last of it. I don't know what's happened. Number eight, Wim. Ah! I knew it had to start working sometime. <laughs> I was a fool to think it could ever work out. At first, I had silly hopes. But there are some barriers that are insurmountable. We live in different worlds. Yes, short and to the point. This ought to send him on his way. Professor? 16,000 even. Well, Let it ride, you'll break the place. No, that's all I have time for. Can I have 16 browns? Well, look, sir. I know what I'd do. What? Well, 35 times 1,000 adds up to another 35,000. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> all right, just one more. All right, place your bets, please. Place your bets, please. Hold your bets. Number five wins. Oh, you lose. It's all right, I only needed 15. <laughs> I'll let you know in a little secret. I found out something very important tonight. My system isn't infallible. <laughs> Besides, I have to catch a plane. <laughs> Calling Mr. Wheeler, flight seven. Your plane is ready. Yes? From Miss Worthington. Calling Mr. Wheeler. Calling Mr. Wheeler. Your plane is ready. Miss Worthington gave this to you? Yes, sir. Is there any message? What? Is there any message, sir? Oh. No. No message, no. Good night, sir. 
Calling Mr. Wheeler. Your plane is ready, Mr. Wheeler. Mr. Wheeler! Mr. Wheeler! Hey, Mr. Wheeler! Just a minute, Mr. Wheeler! Hey! Mr. Wheeler! Mr. Wheeler, hey! Just a minute, wait, where are you going? Wait a minute, Mr. Wheeler! I'm, I'm going out of breath. I said, lucky I caught up with you. I've been, I've been following you high and low. What are you talking about? Well, well, I was on my way to Jersey City, and she threw me off the trail, but I found her. Oh, and I found... The plane's about to take off. Now, look, can't you hear what I'm saying? Are you deep? I found the crooks. Mr. Wheeler, this plane can't wait. Yeah, well, goodbye, Miss. You did? Sure. Look, did you ever see that guy before? Captain Beasley, sure, sure, that's him. Captain Mayai, he's the ringleader. And look, did you ever see that old tomato? Sure, that's her mother. That's Miss Worthington's mother. Her mother, me foot. She's that fat guy's partner. Partner? Yeah. No, that's not possible. I know Mrs. Worthington. You do, eh? Well, here, last but not least. It's Linda. Linda, me I Look, her right name's Miller. Susie Miller. Susie? No, no, you're all mixed up. No, oh, it's your tootsie, all right. They were all working in cahoots. You mean she was in it? Was she in it? They used her as a decoy, and you was only one of their dead ducks. Oh, I don't believe it. Why, only two hours ago, I nearly had her pinched, but she took a powder. Two hours ago? We live in different worlds. Certainly was a slick little number, and they've had dozens before her. Mary Dolores. You mean she isn't a society girl? Ah, uh, she comes from Brooklyn. Went to public school number 18. Flunked in arithmetic and algebra. Quit school, went to work at Stuyvesant selling girdles. Was picked up by these two society crooks in the spring of... Uh, oh. uh, hey, wait a minute. What do you want me to do? Let's call the police. Let's arrest somebody. Where are they? Together, probably. She'll go ahead and warn them. That nightclub's their hangout. Come on, let's go. Oh, you keep out of this. I'll handle it my own way. Oh, be careful. They're dangerous people. You're liable to be shot dead or something. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm not afraid of them. Well, the plane is off, and now Mr. Wheeler is safely on his way. Let's drink to the end of our little family quarrel and to Sunday. Drink it, kid, get stinking. You won't wake up until he carries you over the threshold. It's a threshold for all of us, my pet. Put him out. Don't anybody reach for his gun. One false move, and I'll blow you all the kingdom come. John. So, we meet again, Captain Beasley. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. <laughs> there, there, there must be some mistake, old boy. Put him up. Hello, Mother. So you didn't approve of me, huh? Don't move. The jig is up. I may look dumb, but I've been up against your type before. Well, two can play at this game. Jonah. All right, so you took me for a joyride, all right. But you're gonna let her alone, you understand? Get behind me. I... Get behind me. Open the door. If you know what's good for you, don't anybody follow us. Ye gods, have you ever seen anything so corny? Yes, I caught her. What about the others? You take care of them. They're still inside. Right, but you better keep your eye on her. She's pretty slippery. Here, this will hold her. Don't let her get away. What are you going to do? Marry you, of course. But, but I'm as guilty as they are, I you know. I know all about it. You didn't know what you were doing. Come on, we've still got time to catch the last plane. Hey, wait a minute. We haven't got the key. What do we need it for? Sorry, officer. 